Hello, this is Professor Sanyal. In this video, I'm going to show how to create a lift chart using RapidBiner Studio. In a previous video, I showed how to create classification models and evaluate classification models using classification metrics or confusion metrics. But binary response models, where the model is trying to distinguish between two outcomes, provide some additional methods for assessing their performance. One of the most common ways to compare the performance of such models is to use a ratio called lift, which is calculated as the ratio between the results obtained with and without the model. To show the use of lift charts to evaluate binary classification models, I'm going to build a logistic regression model using this data set, which is called the heart attack data set. If you are not familiar with logistic regression models, you can watch my previous video where I explain how to create and evaluate uh, logistic regression models. Let's explore this data set which um, has information on 138 individuals. Now, the variable of interest in this data set is this variable, second heart attack, which is going to be our outcome variable or target variable. It has data on uh, whether uh, the individual had a second heart attack or did not. So all the 138 individuals in this data set had a heart attack. Now, if we look at the statistics, we see that about half of them had a second heart attack and about half of them did not have a second heart attack. Now, this data set has data on um, other aspects of these 138 individuals, such as age of the individual, the marital status of the individual. In this data set, zero indicates never married, one married, two divorced, and three uh, widowed. Similarly, gender, zero represents female and one represents male. Weight category, zero is regular, one, um, overweight and too obese, cholesterol levels of these individuals, the stress management attribute indicates whether these individuals uh, attended a stress management training or not, uh, or stress management course or not, and trait anxiety is another variable measuring the uh, level of uh, anxiety among these individuals. So a higher value of this attribute indicates that this individual has a higher anxiety level. So as you can see, these are all attributes uh, that uh, can be expected to influence uh, the heart attack uh, propensity of individuals. So let's go back to our design uh, window and try to build a logistic regression model. So we are going to use the set role operator to indicate that our second heart attack variable is going to be our target variable. So we make it label, then we partition the data using the split data operator. And as in the other videos, I'm going to split it 70-30. That is 70% 70 for training the data and 30% for the test. And we are going to use the logistic regression operator to build the model or to train the model. And then we are going to use the apply model operator to test the model using the 30% data in the second partition. Now, in the previous video on logistic regression, we use the performance uh, classification performance operator to um, evaluate the performance of the model. But in this case, I'm going to use the lift to evaluate the model. So we are going to use this operator called create lift chart. Create lift chart expects two input. One is the examples, which are going to come from the label output of the apply model. And then it expects the model, which is going to come from here. 
And so we have the inputs to the lift chart and it has three output ports. The, far, the last one, which says LIF, that generates the lift chart. So I'm going to put that one in the result. And I'm going to also put the examples in the result. And I'm going to show, once I run the process, I'll show why I'm putting that example. So what, what is the result that we can see from that port, the examples port. But the most important thing for the lift chart is what class do we want to create the lift chart for? In this case, the important class is the yes class because that represents the people who had the second heart attack. So I'm going to put the target class as yes. Now, when we type the target class, we have to make sure that it exactly matches how the values are in the data set. So if we look at the data set, we'll see that the second heart attack, the two values are yes and no with yes spelled with Y uppercase and E and S lowercase. So the text we put here has to exactly match that. So for example, if I don't put Y as the uppercase and then try to run it, it will say that no such attribute value because this value does not match the value in the data set. So let's put it as it is in the data set. Now the binning type, we can create the bins in different ways. First, if we put simple, then it asks how many bins we want, number of bins. But we want to create the bin size uh, the same. So all the bin sizes will be the same. Um, so let's put it absolute. If we put it absolute, then instead of the number of bins, it says, what is the size of the bins? Now, these bins will be created based on the number of records in the test data partition or the test partition. And so since this data set does not have a lot of uh, records, I'm going to keep the size of the bin small. So let's say we put 15 in each bin. Now let's go ahead and run this process. So let me remove this one first. That was just to show that uh, there will be an error if we don't match the target class exactly. So let's go ahead and run this process. Here is our lift chart. So since we specified that each bin ha should have exactly 15 uh, uh, members, this bin has 15 members and this bin has 15 members as is shown by this value 15. Now what this 13 means is that out of the first 15, the model was right for 13 individuals. And for the second 15, the model was only right for seven individuals. Now, how this lift chart is drawn is that based on the probability that the logistic regression creates for each individual of belonging to either the yes class or the no class, the lift chart it sorts those individuals based on that probability and then sees if we take the top 15 individuals, that is the 15 individuals with the highest probability of being in the yes class, how many were, for how many individuals was the prediction accurate? So I can show this using the example result that was also generated. So here is the actual outcome of these individuals. So note that there are how many? 41 individuals in the test partition. And these are the actual outcomes of those 41 individuals. And these are the predicted outcomes. Now these predicted outcomes are based on these probabilities that are generated by the logistic regression model. And suppose I sort based on the probability of the yes class, okay? So I sort descending on the probability of the yes class. And for these, see all these, this is the prediction and this is the actual. So all these predictions are correct, but this one, the prediction was wrong. And also this one, the prediction was wrong. So out of the top 15, there were two mistakes in prediction. One is this one and the other is that one. So in other words, there were 13 correct predictions out of the top 15, that is the 
15 with the 15 individuals with the highest probability of belonging in the yes class so since there were 13 correct prediction our lift chart shows that for the first 15 13 were correct and if we do a similar um, exploration of the next 15 we'll see that only seven were correct predictions out of those second 15. now these are shown using the y-axis on the left side which says count so this is 13 but there is also this uh, line graph and that is called a cumulative lift chart and that axis is shown on the right hand side where it shows the percentages so it says that by the first lift uh, bar this first lift chart um, about 65 percent of the individuals within the yes class have been accounted for and then uh, there were 13 and 7, 20 individuals in the yes class. So by the uh, time we have the second lift chart, we have accounted for the 100% of the people belonging to the yes class in the test partition. Now we can calculate the lift using this lift chart. Lift, as I mentioned earlier, is the ratio of the results obtained with and without the model. Lift is calculated for a specified number of cases of the target class. We can calculate the lift for 15 cases using this lift chart. So for the 15 cases, the numerator would be the results obtained with the model, which would, which would be 13 over 15, which is approximately 0.86. And the denominator would be the results obtained without the model, for which we have to go back to the data set where we see that the percentage of the yes class in the data set is approximately 50. So the denominator will be 0.5. In other words, the lift for 15 cases will be 0.86 divided by 0.5, which is approximately 1.72, which implies that this model provides a lift of 1.72 compared to not using the model. Anytime the lift is above one, uh, the model is expected to be useful for uh, predicting the target class. To summarize, lift charts graphically demonstrate the advantage of using a classifier for predicting binary outcomes. Typically, as we include more cases, the lift will decrease. So for example, the lift for 15 cases we calculated as 1.72, but the lift for 20 cases or 25 cases would be less than 1.72 uh, typically. So that concludes this uh, video of uh, how to create lift charts and how to calculate lift from the lift chart. Thank you so much for your attention.